Good morning. Three sentences of scripture from Psalm 46, verse 1. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. And in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31, those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Stand and sing our first hymn. Hymn number 529. Thy hand, O God, has guided. to serve in our armed forces 
and to pray that in the power of his spirit you may serve him and in the pursuit of his heavenly realm. Those thoughts we offer now in prayer. Almighty God, you call us unto a common fellowship of solidarity and love. Draw near to us as we remember those who died in conflict, as we reflect on the sacrifice and their horrors of war. May you move us to always work for peace and justice in our broken world. And this we ask to the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God, the shortcomings of the world, and pride, as selfishness, as greed, as evil divisions and hatreds. Let us confess our share in what is wrong, and our failure to seek and establish that peace which God wills for his children. Most merciful God, Most merciful God, God we, we confess that we have sinned in thought and word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and to direct what shall be, that we may love mercy and walk humbly with you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first reading is, this morning is from the prophet Isaiah chapter 2, reading verses 1 to 5. This is what Isaiah son of Amos saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In the last days, the mountains of the Lord's temple will be established as the highest of the mountains. It will be exalted above the hills, and all nations will stream to it. Many peoples will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the temple of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways, so that we may walk in his path. The law will go out from Zion, the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He will judge between the nations and will settle disputes for many peoples. They will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war any more. Come, descendants of Jacob, let us walk in the light of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading this morning is from the Sermon on the Mount, uh, Matthew 5, verses 1 to 12. Now, when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him and began to teach them. He said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who are hungry and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. In the name of the Father, and in the name of the Son, and through the power of the Holy Spirit, may I speak this morning, and may our hearts be open to hear. 
In Jesus' name, amen. We are engaged in a tradition, aren't we? Uh, Remembrance Sunday is a tradition that started over 100 years ago now. And I personally feel very strongly about uh, Remembrance Sunday. And I have observed it since I was old enough uh, to sit quietly in uh, church. Each of us, um, when we come to a remembrance service, does come with personal stories and memories, and, and then we join together uh, as community as we remember the service and the sacrifice of those who have suffered and uh, died. I come today with memories of my father, um, Cyril, who will lay our wreath, uh, comes with memories of the heartbreak in his family as both a grandfather and a great uncle died in the Great War. And the rest of the family who served they came home, uh, many of whom with injuries. In the week past, as some of you might have known, I was away at a clergy conference at, um, uh, in Cabin. And on the way down, I stopped in Colbrook Parish Church on the outskirts of Ripra. I, I ate my, my sandwich first, uh, made by Bronwyn, and then I walked up through the graveyard. And I was there to take a picture of a headstone for a friend of my, my father and uh, it was the, the home church for his grandparents and he lived in London and he can't make that journey just now. And you know, I came away from that, uh, that little walk up one path and down another uh, having read the names of eight UDR men, the wife of one UDR man, all who had been uh, killed, and I read the name of one police officer. And I would imagine, uh, just as we come with our memories here today in that parish church, they will come to uh, remembrance with their memories. And um, today we are joining people uh, and communities across uh, the nation, and we're coming to get together to pay tribute to all those who have given their lives in service of our country. We remember the sacrifice of so many and uh, we acknowledge that it holds a special place in the heart of our nation and we want to remember and say uh, thank you. And as I said, it, it got, began 104 years ago and uh, it was to mark the armistice, the moment when the hostilities of the First World War drew to a close. And um, that, of course, was the point when the European nations, along with America, uh, made after four shattering years of war, they made uh, a peace accord. The military casualties incurred in the UK during the First and the Second World War, they dwarf uh, anything that has occurred uh, since. And I went on to our Parliament's website to see what our Parliament, uh, what is written on our, our, our uh, National Parliament's website. And this is what it says. Three times as many British forces died on the first day of the Battle of the Somme, 19,240. And some are listed here, including Thomas uh, Hawthorne. They had been killed in, uh, and I'll just read that again because I've just lost my thread. Three times as many British forces died on the first day of the Battle of Somme that have been killed in every combat operation since the end of the First World War. Had the Prime Minister read out their names in the House of Commons, as has happened since 2003, it would have taken 11 hours at least. Over the course of the war, 880,000 British soldiers uh, and, and four members of the forces died. 6% of the adult male population 
12.5% of those who were serving. The toll on the adult male population meant that the 1921 census recorded 109 women for every 100 men. In World War II, there were 384,000 soldiers killed in combat, but a higher civilian death toll, 70,000 as opposed to 2,000 in the First War, largely due to the German bombing raids uh, during the Blitz. 40,000 civilians died in the seven-month period uh, between September 1940 and May 1941 and almost half of them died in uh, London. That is what our Parliament is recorded on our Parliament's website. And a tradition that started over a century ago, a tradition that continues because it gives an opportunity each year for us to remember and to honour those who have lost their lives in that first great war and in all the conflicts uh, uh, since. And so today we will be silent together, we will remember together and, uh, and together we will deepen our allegiance to the cause of peacemaking in our own time. It's a point in the year where collectively across the United Kingdom we are silent, we remember and we commit ourselves to peace. But today, uh, our act of remembrance takes place in a church, and that means there's a bit of a difference. And when we are silent, when we remember, and when we commit ourselves to peace building, we do so within the context of our Christian faith. We believe that the cross was where all God's work was done, once and for all. As Jesus gave his life as a sacrifice, and he did so to end all sacrifices. We live out that belief by, in Jesus by following his example, by following Christ's example every day of our lives. And that is the example of the cross. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. So as followers of Jesus, the silence today, I believe, speaks to us on a number of levels. And of course, the, the first great silence was on the 11th of the 11th, uh, in the 11th month uh, in 1918, when the noise of the guns fell silent. What a silence that must have been to those men in the trenches. The silence reminds us that uh, with that inconceivable loss of life in the Great War, people at home were also silenced. I believe it reminds us that here in Macrigal, people were silenced. A deeper silence than the guns literally falling silence. It was the silence of loss. This was the silence of a generation uh, that had been uh, through uh, hell and back. Never and many never returned home to talk and to joke and to live and to breathe with their mums, their sweethearts, their wives, uh, their children. And uh, in our own parish, 67 volunteered and 13 uh, did not come home. Their voices silenced in the townlands of this parish. John and Albert and Thomas and Edward and William and Thomas and Robert and George and James and Claude and Henry and Alexander and Robert. They were silenced and their families were silenced by the loss. And then there was the silence of the trauma, what we now refer to as PTSD. And, and I think in my adult life, that's uh, a phrase that has uh, come, come to the fore perhaps in the last 20 years, post-traumatic stress disorder. The PTSD of those who did return but couldn't speak of what they experienced. And there was and there still is uh, another silence and 
I think it's um, the silence of the struggle of people like us, Christians, and, and everyone to find words to speak into these, uh, these horrors of loss and trauma, to make Christ known in the midst of suffering in the depths, I think, though, of that conversation, we do discover through God's grace words to speak, words of healing and forgiveness and the knowledge that in Jesus, death is not the end uh, uh, and love, not violence, is the, the final word. So silence, uh, when we hold it today, honours that generation and every generation since who were silenced by war, by loss, or by, by trauma. And today we also remember, and uh, as I've already mentioned, um, uh, we live with the remembrances of war. Mine is my father who, who fought in the Korean War as a young man and came home. Uh, I remember as a small pup uh, wearing uh, an Air Force uniform that went to my toes and flying boots that went to right up my legs. Uh, and, and I remember him in that context. Uh, and, I, and he never talked about those sorties uh, in and over enemy territory in Korea at that time. Many of us uh, remember others uh, that were loved and lost. Um, uh, in Northern Ireland, many will remember those who protected and preserved life through the campaigns waged by terrorists of all hues. And uh, sometimes I think it is such an euphemism, a euphemism to say the troubles. Uh, it's like something uh, when you go to the doctors, what's troubling you today? We lived through uh, a terrible, terrible time. War and remembrance of war is not something uh, removed. An experience that took place a hundred years ago in another land, it is present in different ways for all of us now. And uh, as I dipped into a graveyard in Colbrook, I know it is present there uh, as it is across our province. It's very present also in Europe as we continue to pray for peace in Ukraine. In our remembering, we come face to face uh, with the questions of what would we have done uh, if we had been in their shoes? And, and that brings us face to face before God with our own humanity and our need to live at peace. So remembrance inevitably draws us into that commitment to the cause of peace. And that's why it is so important that we do it each and every year. Jesus in the resurrection shows us the way to peace, the hard won costly peace of his sacrifice uh, in face. Uh, he faced uh, people who opposed him. Uh, he didn't respond with retribution and retaliation, but mercy and forgiveness and love. And he gives us uh, a way to be human. Our service today is about holding a silence. It is about remembering, but it's also about our longing to be formed as people who long to live in peace now, in the here and now. And you know, when you think about the Gospels uh, accounts that we read, think about uh, the disciples, think of Peter and Andrew, James and John. They were fishermen, and when they were called, they were down by the Sea of Galilee, and uh, they followed Jesus with obedience. Jesus called them from what would appear to be a peaceful scene of, of fishing on the calm waters of the Sea of Galilee, and he calls them into a deep and dangerous waters that Jesus faced and ultimately led to, to the cross. In the face of that impending hostility, Jesus doesn't build an army, he calls us to be kingdom builders with him. He calls individuals to come and follow him. It's a call to live and serve in a new way as a people of a heavenly kingdom. It will mean sacrifice that brings peace and makes the kingdom of God come nearer. So today, as we hold silence and we remember, 
We're invited to be part of Jesus' peace building in the lights of what is happening across Europe. And it does, does, uh, as, uh, in, in my worst nightmares, what is happening across Europe is very, very bleak. Uh, it does call us to be peacemakers centered on the love of Christ, even in, uh, uh, even in deep waters uh, uh, like we are now, it seems even more urgent. So today we remember and we honour those who live and die in the cause of freedom. We hold a silence, we remember, not so that we can forget for the rest of the year, but that we can be reminded of a call to speak and recommit our lives to be uh, peacemakers in the image of Jesus. A people who through love and passion and self offering and, and the sacrifice of Christ, God can come near. And we live into that hope of a world where war will be no more. And so today we will say, we will remember them. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity uh, in, uh, in the year uh, to publicly come together and commit ourselves in and through a time of silence and remembrance uh, to be peace builders in our time. In Jesus' name, Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Today now, as we prepare to come to our act of remembrance, we're going to sing together hymn number 503. 36, 536.
be for God those who have died for their country and more, those from this parish and whose memory we treasure, and all who have lived and died in the service of others. We remember William John Graham, Second Lieutenant, Royal Irish Rifles, Albert A. Hawthorne, Eleventh Royal Irish Rifles, Thomas Hawthorne, Eleventh Royal Irish Rifles. Edward Lavery, 2nd Royal Inniskilling Fusiliers, William Lockman, 13 Royal Scots Fusiliers, Thomas Dick, 2nd Royal Inniskilling Fusiliers, Robert Tollerton, 11th Royal Irish Rifles, George Tollerton, 14th Royal Irish Rifles, James Tollerton, 9th Royal Irish Rifles, Claude A. Walker, 2nd Royal Inniskilling Fusiliers, Henry Albert George Hill, Australian Imperial Force, Alexander Martin, Auckland Regiment, New Zealand Expeditionary Force, Robert Holcroft, 7th Royal Staffordshire Regiment, and those from the Second World War, John William Murphy, Royal Air Force, Ivan Phillips, Royal Inniskill and Fusiliers, William Roberts, Royal Artillery, John Finley Smiley, Royal Marines, Joseph Beckett Thompson, Royal Air Force. We remember all those who have died as a result of war and conflict. shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old, age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn, at the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We, we will, will remember, remember them. them.
blood shall wipe away all tears from your eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall be there any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Almighty and eternal God, from whose love in Christ we cannot be parted either by death or life, hear our prayers and thanksgiving for those whom we remember this day. Fulfill in them the purpose of your love and bring us with them to your eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. hymn number 544 which will lead us into the creed and our prayers for today. shall appear in power and 
great glory, we may be made like him in his eternal and glorious kingdom, where he is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Amen. In our prayers today, we focus on the work of the Royal British Legion. Uh, for over a hundred years now, they have challenged themselves and others to create better futures for those who have served and uh, their families. By working together, they seek to make sure that all who have served and sacrificed on our behalf get fair treatment and recognition they deserve. So we pray for their work today. Let us give thanks to God for, this, for the, the work of the Royal British Legion, for all the support offered to servicemen and women, to veterans and to families, and pray that they may always be there whenever help is needed. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. And let us pray for the armed forces community, for the pressures they face whilst on active service and when their service is over, for those who live with the physical and psychological wounds and those who support them each day, that there may be greater understanding of their needs. And we particularly remember the veterans here in Northern Ireland and, uh, and the fulfilment of their needs, particularly those from uh, the times uh, where we were as a community under assault uh, from terrorists of all hue. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. And let us pray for the work of advocacy, <coughs> for every effort to give voice to service and ex-service personnel and their families, for those who speak up for His Majesty's Armed Forces in Parliament and in the devolved assemblies across the United Kingdom, uh, and right through the corridors of power, that their service may be acknowledged and their voice heard. Lord, in your mercy, you. hear our prayer. Let us pray for the work of the Royal British Legion branches around uh, the country and for their membership. They may be places of friendship and community, serving one another's needs. And we remember in particular the branch here in Lisburn. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Let us pray that we may all fulfil our duty to remember. To remember those who have died in active service and those who sacrificed health of mind and body in protecting this nation, that our remembrance may do them honour. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And we pray for the ongoing work of the Royal British Legion, for the people who contribute in caring, campaigning and remembrance, and for the next generation of service personnel, that they may have the hope of support and a better future, whatever might be asked of them and might whatever may befall them. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Let us pray as Jesus taught us, our Father. Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And in a moment now of silence, let's just remember before God uh, those who have uh, died in this year past, members of this congregation, who would be part of this service in years past. We we'll also remember the uh, two families bereaved uh, over the end of last week, the Watterson family and the Leslie family. We ask God to speak into their pain at this time, that they would know his peace and his presence and his comfort. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our final uh, hymn today uh, is, uh, O God, our help in ages past.
to a close now with the the blessing and then uh, the singing of the national anthem. God grant to the living grace, to the church, the king, the commonwealth and all people, unity, peace and concord, and to us all God's servants, life everlasting, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Thank you.